So welcome to another episode of Masterminds with James Allen. He is I and I am him. And today we got my guy, man. We've got a really good friend of mine going back to our business school days. I'm excited to have him here. Man, what can I say? So, so many things, you know, I call, we, we call him K-Nice. We call him K-Money. I mean, when I say we, it's a few uh, of us. Shout out to Paul. Um, and some things we don't even call him to his face, but I mean, he's my guy nonetheless. <laughs> But no, I'm really excited, man. Um, yeah, this guy, what can we say about him? He is, his story is super impressive. To see where he's at now from business school, man, I couldn't be more excited and proud just to, you know, call this guy a friend. Right after graduating and doing undergrad, he came right into uh, the graduate program. I thought, you know, this kid was probably just helping out at, at you know, day <laughs> one when, when, when we all met in the uh, in the business building. But I was like, oh, okay, we're going to be in class together. All right, awesome. But, uh, but since then, he has really um, embodied and taken on the entrepreneurial route, you know, um, after business school. I mean, this guy has, has done consulting work uh, while he was still in business school. Then he took an alternate route after graduating and really uh, chose his own path. And we'll get into it, but doing things like uh, kind of in the, uh, in, the, in the health space and, and all this that, you know, really wasn't uh, very known by many of us. And then to being where he is now, a co-founder, you know, director of operations for Beyond the Equator. Welcome, my guy, Kevin Bratcher. What up, bro? How you doing? How's it going, man? That was quite the intro. I appreciate it. Was, it. It was a lot of talking, but not saying a lot, but... Um, That's what we're good yeah. from business school. <laughs> right, right. You want me to get up there and talk about shit and sound confident about something for a couple? I can do it. Hey, I got you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but, yo, it's it's really amazing, man, just to kind of sit here. And, dude, we're actually sitting here talking business. I mean, and the, the stories I could, you know, I could share is just like you were the, the first guy that you know, brought a pint of beer to the valuation and modeling class and, uh, you know, and, and still took solid notes. So that shit was- Yeah, impressive. you got to keep it light. You just said <laughs> valuation and modeling, man, needs a beer. Yeah. So um, what's been going on lately, dude? What's going on with Beyond the Equal? I, I see there's a lot of announcements that have been made lately. Some some cool things uh, you guys have had underway for a while and, you know, just bring it to- bring it to the public. So what's been going on, bro? Yeah, definitely. So we've been working on some new products, um, working on some new partnerships. I guess the biggest thing, we just finished a a food accelerator out of Atlanta. So they had, they had one based out of Austin and Dallas for the last 10 years and they just opened one in Atlanta. So we were part of their first cohort, uh, which is a 12 week, pretty intensive program, uh, working with mentors from, you know, all over the CPG space. So that was awesome. We finished that towards the end of May. And now we're trying to you know, implement everything we learned and go from there. Congrats, congrats. And how do you, so how do you get picked for that? I mean, what's, what's the process to, to join in that cohort? Yeah, so you apply, any any CPG company can apply. And, Sorry, uh, for the people who are not in yeah. so CPG. What's Consumer CPG? products. So okay, okay. The thing, this one specifically food and bev, mm-hmm. um, but you know, there was some, makeup products there's a couple other things in there but it's mostly focused on food oh. yeah you just apply you tell them what you're doing why you're doing it and, and kind of your vision and uh, why you want to work with their group of mentors and they they see if it'd be a good fit you go through a couple interviews um, with the team and then with some of the mentors and then and go from there cool cool and, and so any major takeaways that you guys you know gather from that like you know that you're implementing right away just kind of something that maybe just a light turned on or a big nugget, you know, the major takeaways for you guys? Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing was making sure our, our foundation was solid of, of our brand vision and our purpose and then kind of why we were doing everything we were doing. I think sometimes when you're building something, you get kind of bogged down in the day to day and yes, bro, and you lose yeah. sight of some of the bigger stuff. So they forced us to go back and say, all right, are we building on a solid foundation? And if not, let's, let's share that up before we keep going forward. So that was, I think forcing us to do that was very helpful. Dope. And you know what I've learned, man, just doing things like that, whether it be a mastermind or a 12 week cohort, 
or just something of that nature when you're investing in yourself in your company man that shit is so necessary like for you know because like you're saying you could be so bogged down in the weeds of things it, it really helps energize you and take that thirty thousand foot view and it makes you even that much stronger so yeah i'm a big advocate of um you know, re, like investing in yourself and, and reinvesting in your company and, you know, to grow. So that's, that's dope. And as entrepreneurs, uh, we do some, we, we get so siloed and so focused on the day to day that you have to really remind yourself about that. So, yeah. And, and I think it's, it's helpful to have other people in the industry or generally successful people coming in with fresh eyes and saying, Hey, here's what you're doing. Here's where you could improve, but also say, you know, you guys are onto something, uh, sometimes you get bogged down in day to day. You're not, yeah. You're not seeing the bigger picture as much. So it's nice for people to come and say, "Hey, you're onto something. Here's where you can improve." But you know, there's something here. So what? You know, what are the next steps that you guys are going to be taking here recently? I don't, because I don't want to step on your toes. But you guys just had a major announcement with a partnership and some new uh, products. Because uh, you know, you guys have been doing some R and D, and we were part of that. Uh, Definitely. Part of the process. Yeah, I appreciate you sending some to me and the kids and the family. Of course. Oh, wow, yeah. yeah. So what's going on with that? So we, we announced a partnership last year with Ocean Spray. And then this year we're doing something Dope. with a company called Foodberry. They have some pretty cool food tech, very similar to real fruit skin. Mm. And, and they can apply it to make kind of like a gusher fruit snack type product. And so they've been looking for companies to partner with to make something that goes on the inside of that product. So we sell butters. We partnered with them on the butter side. They just partnered with uh, Natamu, an ice cream company, to do an ice okay. cream version. Yeah. And, um, and so, yeah, they selected us as their butter partner, and we did a bunch of R&D. Uh, you guys were a big part of that, getting people yeah. to, to try it out early stages, find out, you know, who our consumer really is. Is it parents? Is it kids? Is it both? Um, yeah. And, yeah, so we're still kind of in the trial phase. We launched them to the public a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, and we're starting to talk to some stores to do some in-store testing and go for it. Okay. That. So is it, is it available yet? Or is it, um, I mean, can you go, it may not be, uh, the products may not be placed in actual brick and mortar stores, but I mean, is it somewhere you can buy them online? Or is it something? Yep. Can yeah, you can buy it on our website. That's the only place right now. Um, mm -hmm. So we can really control the, the shipping time. And, and so we can get some feedback from customers. Gotcha. And once we understand uh, better how this travels and how it stays frozen and uh, where it should be merchandised in the store, then we'll start putting it in retail, uh, talk to Amazon Frozen, do that kind of stuff. Cool. Um, and what's the, what's the website real quick, bro? Beyondtheequator.com. All right. Dope. Dope. Um, man, let's talk about logistics, though, because in uh, food and beverage, uh, that's, that's a major component. And... <laughs> I've been talking to food and beverage people lately and shit is shit is getting tough from what I hear. And all I can do is kind of like listen and, and try to be empathetic as, as much as possible because I have no idea what the hell like I that's not my business. And so yeah, you don't ship a lot of stuff and and uh, no. but no, yeah, yeah, but I mean, yeah, on our on, a, on the fair side, like yeah, like wood and supplies and you know that kind of shit is sure. for like remodeling. But no, I mean, what is that, bro? And why is that so impactful to you guys? Well, I mean, most of our business, at least to start, is online, right? So everything online, especially consumer product, is has to be shipped to to the end user, and that ends up it's not necessarily part of your cost of goods, but it, it does matter with your margins. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we make products all over the country. We ship products all over the country. So minor increases in gas, in shipping rates, in anything at the port, all of that goes downstream to us and eventually to the customer. So it's been chaotic the last, you know, 12 months, but it's something you have to kind of plan for and, and build into your margins. God damn. So I'm spending $15 for uh uh, $20 for a, a bottle of sea butter right now? Come on, man. No, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, that's just the way it is. And it's just not in food and beverage, like, beverage, pardon me, like we're noticing all these things are linked. I think COVID really taught us that. And it's just kind of crazy how you really have to adjust. And like you're saying, it is passed on. But I mean, with the thing I've noticed is 
quality and the service and just how, like you're saying, that foundation, how your business is built is really, um, in my opinion, is how people are going to be able to kind of, you know, weather this, this storm, however long yeah. it is. And I think in the food space, like retail is, is where people buy their food mostly still. It's probably mm-hmm. the last, last industry that will fully go online. So, you know, that's why it's so important to get into stores. You, you lose that shipping concern. You can ship stuff in bulk to stores and, and everything gets a little mm-hmm. cheaper per item. There you go. There you go. You know, and what I've been really interested in lately is really hearing about people's marketing strategies. So like, how are you guys been able to um, really get in front of, of people for, and I guess I should have been better at this. I still got an A in marketing, but I know there's a difference between marketing and brand recognition and product yeah. placement, but I ain't a business school no more. So I put all that shit together. So with that being, with that being said though, like seriously, um, what is the strategy there? You guys have somebody um, full time to kind of help with it, to kind of lead that those efforts, right? Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we have a good um, we have a local firm here, Ferret Napoleon. Shout out to Tiffany. Uh, they do all of our social media marketing, mm. um, but the marketing is is kind of a it's a very broad piece of what we do. So, like, we have online, we have Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Now is big. Um, that you have to have a presence there. You have to be creative and different. Like, Yo, if I see you dancing with a pack of seed butter on fucking TikTok, <laughs> I'm, yes, I will order a bulk. If that's you're right, <laughs> you got to get out there, man. Yeah, TikTok. <laughs> Even I'm too old for TikTok. I feel like, but stop it, stop it. You're still in your twenties. Come on. Yeah, I wish. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I make you feel old when you know how old I am now. No shit. Uh, I'm like, stop it, please. Don't, don't cut it. Oh <laughs> no, that, I mean the, the hardest part is getting stuff off shelf. Yeah. And that's if you're in store, you don't know who's there, you can't control the marketing like you can online. So it has to be on your package, it has to be on your value proposition. Why, why would I pick this up at all? Right. So you're talking coupons, discounts, demoing in store, which obviously COVID took away for a while. Oh shit, yeah. Um, there's a lot of stuff that, that you just have to continue to do to get, get trial. That's the hardest part. Got you. Got you. And it's like, and what I'm also interested to hear about everyone's kind of stories and how they pull the trigger, d- depending on where they're at in their, I guess, in their, in their business life cycle. Um, it's really, you know, as opposed to going outside, because you just mentioned a firm, a marketing firm. Oh, and when was that decision made to like, hey, guys, we probably can't do this in house. We really need to go get someone and hire a true friend. Like, and just other things of that nature, you know, like, like um, for me, you know, for example, is, is the marketing is the, you know, when do I, you know, get away from doing the, uh, the bookkeeping myself and hire the bookkeepers and all that right. kind of stuff. How are you making those decisions? Because it's like, dude, that scaling part, is 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 a di- you know is a difficult balance because cash flow is king but at the same time it's like all right you know we really need to focus on other parts so we really have to hire somebody so how do you guys make those decisions is it just you making it in a vacuum is it a you know a team or- it's it's a team effort but it's really just about the time we're spending I mean, there's only so many hours a week and if i'm sitting there answering Instagram DMs or something, that's not a good way to spend my time. So right, we, right. we get when, when we find the quotes from, from firms and we say, okay, here's, here's what it'll cost us each month to have right. someone doing this on retainer versus here's how much time I'm spending each month making posts. And not only would they be able to do it better, the, they'll probably be able to do it cheaper per hour than wasting my time doing it. So it's usually just a, a cost analysis of time versus quality really. And what about the ROI in that? Like, cause some of those things, bookkeeping is like, okay, it's just, you know, the quality and all that sh- really should be an ROI uh, attached to it, but you can actually see the ROI attached to your, your marketing efforts. So, I mean, yeah. how, how do you, how do you guys measure and go about that? Yeah. So every, everything we, we measure that we can measure, I mean, stuff like posting on Instagram and Facebook, it's hard to get an exact ROI. It's more brand building, brand awareness, 
uh, on marketing programs in store, you can get an exact ROI. Every dollar we spend on coupons, we got X number of sales and you can say, mm-hmm. okay, well, this works better than demoing or this, this type of thing. But most of the stuff we do online is brand awareness, brand building, so that when somebody goes to store, they see our product, they're, they're not, it's not the first time they've seen it. They've seen it online, they've read reviews, they've considered it or they've bought it. And now they see it in store and like, okay, I'm familiar at least with what these guys are doing. Got you. Yeah. And the only reason I asked that, because like right now I, I've had meetings yesterday and today, like as I, as I scale and I'm trying to bring on people and uh, I'm going to bring on a new uh, person for my acquisitions team. And awesome. yeah. And thank you. And somebody um, had mentioned to me, he's, he's actually going to be on here in a few weeks, but he was, I'm going through his firm to, for hiring. He was telling me, he was like, you know, KPIs. And he was like, each role shouldn't have more than three KPIs. And those KPIs need to be clear and, and how they're, uh, you know, each person can attain them and, you know, easy to track. And so, um, no, man, that's, that's the only reason I'm, I'm really just kind of sitting here taking notes and picking people's brains about how they go about, you know, each of those things. And so is it, if it's like, you have somebody doing your, your, uh, uh, Instagram or social media marketing, it may not be the ROI, but it may be amount of followers or engagement. Or yeah, you have to you have to have something that each part of your team can own and and be responsible for. And yeah, it might not be the exact return on a post, but it's say, okay, we're going to post X number of times per week, and we're going to re- make sure all DMs are responded to, and you know we're going to check over each post and make sure the creative is is up to snuff and stuff right. like that. And, and each week or month or whatever, you have a review and say, okay, here's where we, where we hit our goals. Here's where we didn't, but it might not always be monetary, but it'll, it'll be, you know, make sure you're consistent. That's interesting, man. Um, and what's really impressive is, so you guys, you guys used to be, you know, somewhat, can I say global? I mean, as far as, we, yeah. you know, you, yeah, you guys were a global and a lot since then, I think you guys have moved a lot of your operations stateside, right? Yeah, most of what we do is, is U.S. based now, but we were yeah. you know, farming in South America, shipping all over the world. So, yeah, a lot of that. Damn, bro. And how big is the team? Because that's impressive. How big is your team? Right now, full time is two of us. And, uh, you know, we outsource, like I said, some of the marketing, some of the accounting, that kind of stuff. So the team's a little bit bigger when you put the 1099s in, but full time is two. Oh shit! I count all of them. If you're, <laughs> if you're touching, no. If you're touching my business, you're part of my team. No, that's, that's, but that's that's dope, man. Because you guys are like essentially like very lean, and you guys are kind of hitting and touching all these different points. So, um, nah, cool, cool. And so full time, it's only you and one other person, and you guys are in, in New Orleans. And I mean, how much travel now is involved, especially as. Yeah. Not as much as it was at the start. Uh, we yeah. don't have as many holdings in South America as we started with. It's, yeah. There's some political turmoil in Bolivia that, that we don't need to get into, but <laughs> it, it made owning land a bit of a problem. So we focus mostly stateside. So our travel now is mostly to trade shows or going to pitch to retailers, stuff yep. like that within the states. Yeah. Now, I remember, dude, you used to, you used to be... Was it traveling to Bolivia? I mean, yep. where were you traveling to? Damn, Bolivia was every every other month for about ten days for a couple of years there. How was that, man? I mean, what was that it's wild, man? <laughs> Bolivia is awesome, but it is is wild. Yeah, yeah, it's it's hard to do business down there. Why? So it's, just, it's just a lot different. Everything is, um, it's everything is super regulated, but also like wildly unregulated i know that doesn't make any sense no it does it does i mean yeah 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 mountains There's, of paperwork but also do whatever the hell you want at the same time yeah and it's impossible to get anything done <laughs> nah shit i could dude i could only imagine man so um i mean like so as of right now kev i mean what would you really say what stage is your business in like i mean Cause it's not, it's not really a startup, is it? It's, it's still a startup. I would say we're in the, the seed phase. If, if you're talking about like VC type stuff. Okay. Um, so that's, that's the phase that we're fundraising in. Yep. And then, um, How's that going for you? 
It's all right. I mean, it's yeah. busy. It's talking to a lot of people. Uh, a but, lot of road show stuff type stuff. You on the road a lot with that? Uh, not too much. Everything's Zoom these days, but that's why mm-hmm. that the, the accelerator was so nice. It kind of honed in on what exactly that offer is. And so awesome. now it's just repetition in front of uh, people that might be interested. Nice. Nice. Okay. Nah, very cool. And so is that prob- probably your top priority right now? Yeah, right now that's our focus, getting that secured. And then we have some some hires we'd like to make you know, later this year and then um, put some of that money back into marketing and really start pushing it forward. Yeah. All right. Okay, cool. Cool. Um, yeah. For anybody maybe listening to this, I mean, uh, uh, what, what like quarter Q3, Q4, what type of positions are you ready to share or just kind of in the, you still kind of kicking those, those positions around? Yeah. I mean, the, the biggest one would probably be VP of sales. Um, and we have some people in mind already from, from the accelerator that were, mm. were our mentors and, and are talking about coming on board once we close this round. Um, and then after that, it'd probably be somebody in accounting. Um, yeah, that'd probably be the first two, two bigger hires. Got you. Got you. Okay. And so, yeah, man, we've kind of talked about what's the primary focus and what's the main concern. Any, I mean, I don't have to, you know, dig too deep, but are there any kind of things that, I guess I hate to use the cliche term, but like keeping you up at night or anything like kind of as far as a business, maybe a stressor you could, you could talk about. I mean, uh, I've got a couple. Obviously, obviously fundraising is, is not a cakewalk. So yeah, definitely yeah. making sure we're, we're getting what we need. Yeah. Um, but other than that, it's, it's not too much. We have a plan and it's nice coming out of the accelerator. Yeah. With a, a very concrete plan and, and secure it's the funding and go, go execute. So yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, we're feeling pretty good right now. We're in a good spot and it's just a matter of getting out there. Okay. What's cool. keeping you up at night? Bro. Uh, shit. Let's talk about it. So systems for one, I've made some great improvements in systems on my end, but as I do these other things, like have a podcast or expand my footprint, I need systems and I need quality people and, and to help with that. And so, but it's also bringing these people on and having the, the bandwidth to train, right. To, yep. to have the systems clear and then have, you know, the, like the systems to check up on them and check their performance and to follow up and to help them and to support them. All these different types of things, you know, communication, culture. I am very much. So I would say still in startup mode. So all of these things are still being defined yeah. and there's like, Within our, within our particular industry, there's so much pivoting going on. I mean, clearly interest rates is one. Like literally, I am under contract right now to purchase a property I was super, I'm super excited about. Hopefully we can still get it done, but it's, you know, 50-50 at this point. And the lady is doing a new build. And the, when she first bought into the new build to start the whole process, her interest rate was at like 3 point. 3.25. Her her interest rate the last time she talked to them was at 6.7. Jesus. And so she's like, hey, I may need some more, you know, this contract doesn't work for me. And I'm like, well, she's like, yeah, can you come up $100,000? I'm like, no, I can't. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So those are the, yeah, like, so, you know, like shit like that is just pivoting, but and it's just like, you know, all right, you create these systems and things, but you still have to be able to be fluid enough to change as uh, the dynamics and your markets change. And Yeah, your market's um, changing fast. It's, it's yeah. things are moving yeah. quickly in real estate, but yeah, yeah. But, getting systems in place is tough. So mm-hmm. once you have them, though, you can, you can lean on them a little stronger. Yes, and automation. And so, right, another thing is um, we can just make this um, – uh, therapy uh, sessions for James, but <laughs> another one is my CRM system and like automating that as a, let, making it less manual. Uh, so when I do hand it off to someone else, there's less likely for mistakes and, and also improving the quality and the thoroughness of each individual uh, task within that. If, if you're automating this now, I've been and the guy yesterday was pushing me. He's like, you need to just go on Upwork or Fiverr and find somebody and hire them. But then it's like, for me, I, I've been looking to see if I could just find that stuff myself and just spend a weekend and probably code it. 
and do it my, my, on my own. But right. I don't know, man. That's that's just the kind of stuff I'm dealing with right now. And then it's just like, you know, am I am I buying the right system? Like the guessing on myself, do I need to buy something else? So right. um, just a lot, just, you know, like, hey, which direction is going to give me the most bang for my money? And then like, I've already spent so much effort and time on this one. Do I just blow this up? and go buy something else because shiny object syndrome is a big <laughs> thing and, it's real and it's so, particularly it's real bro so so is some cause fallacy too so don't 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 think just because you spent some time doing something a couple of weeks ago that, that you have to stick in that direction have you ever used loom the video app Mm-mm. you should check that out like you can just okay. record whatever you whatever operations you do Mm-hmm. Uh, it'll record your screen and then you can send it to somebody and say, hey, here's what I want you to do on a regular basis or whatever. Here's exactly how I do it. One, two, three, four, five. Um, oh. And, oh. and it can help you automate some stuff or at least show people how you do it. Awesome. Loom.com? I think it's .com. Just, so, just Google Loom. L-O-M. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Loom, cut the check. We're not just giving you guys free pop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> and other than that, man, what's... uh. How's quality of life, man? How was life after undergrad, bro? I mean, I mean, we've been out for quite some time. Uh, I mean, but I mean, how are things? I mean, you know, settling into owning your own company, hiring people, creating these yeah. systems. I mean, what's was that like being in, getting up every morning and adulting and shit? Like this, it's all right, you know. It's not as bad <laughs> as everybody makes it out to be. <laughs> but, uh, well, yeah, because two things: it's it, it is what you make of it. And the second thing is, it does not hurt that you answer and work for yourself as That's opposed right. to, yeah, like, trust me, I was in corporate America. Yeah. <laughs> that shit can't be worse than what people make it out to be, bro. So, um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't dipped my toe there yet, but I do know that at times it can be, you need to motivate yourself and say, okay, we need to, sometimes it's like, okay, what am I supposed to do this afternoon? You got to, you know, okay, what's next? Let's figure it out. As opposed to here's a checklist of things you need to do every single day. And uh, at times you got to figure it out, which is, you know, sometimes you got to work 60 hours a week, but sometimes you got to work 25 or 30. It's just, right. you know, adjust to whatever the company needs. Right. But Kev, how do you, how do you manage that motivation? Because New Orleans, oh my goodness. New Orleans has so many fucking distractions. I mean, so... Yeah. I mean, how is it like, Kevin, come by. We're at, you know, we're uptown having drinks or blah, blah, blah. We're in Midtown. Yeah. Come out, hang out. But like, it's like, you know, being being disciplined enough to like, I had to get this stuff done because at the end of the day, all you're answering, you're answering to yourself. I mean, granted, you're answering to your team and the people, you know, funding you. But at the end of the day, no one, none of those people are over your shoulder like that. Ah, you didn't finish that today. Right, right. Well, that's that's where some of those systems you're talking about come in place, mm-hmm. whether it's it's making sure you have time blocked off to do each one of those things mm-hmm. and then checking your KPIs. So if I know at the end of the week I got to hit, you know, X amount of calls or X amount of emails or sales got to be here, then I can on a Thursday afternoon, I can say, OK, somebody wants to get drinks. I got I got work to do or, yeah, we're doing pretty good. Let's go have a drink. Yeah, um, no so doubt. I think the systems in place and the the reporting that you have to do to yourself mostly, but sometimes to investors uh, kind of keeps you on track. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. And um, like you're saying, uh, the time blocking too, man, is, is huge. Like um, I'm not, I, I hate to be that person, but it's more, I'm more so getting to that point is like, if it's not on the schedule, then <laughs> it does, it's not real. Yeah, so, no, I, I hate to be that person, but like right now we're fundraising. Yeah. I still got other stuff I got to do. So I got to put time for it and say, okay, stop what you're doing and go over here and make sure customers are getting their orders or you're working on new products or something like that. Because uh, you get so you get stuck in a one-track mind sometimes. So it's nice to make sure about you got to do, do this here and, and force yourself to, to switch lanes. Talk about it. Sheesh. Sheesh. Any other uh, kind of productivity hacks that you got, man? I mean, that you could probably share? I don't think that. I mean, time blocking is kind of the big one. I have like a just a simple checklist of things to do every day, like read yeah. a little bit, get get your exercise in, your water, that kind of stuff. But that's not really yeah. business related. That's just 
if at the end of the day I'm looking at it, I'm like, shit, I didn't do any of this. And I'm like, all right, I got a little too bogged down in what I was doing or I need to move a little bit or, or do something. Yeah. So uh, I do have just like a simple checklist every day. But um, other than that, that's, that's about it. Make sure you yeah. keep a to-do list. And, and you, I do like to keep like four, four things that if I don't get those done today, I had that, you know, something went awry. Yeah. And then everything else is below that. So, you know, the ongoing list that never ends. I hear about that. Like, yes, yeah, a lot of like high performing people always talk about the, you know, top three things or four things or whatever it is. Like, where does that, where does that come from? I mean, cause I guess I don't, I don't really necessarily write those things down. I kind of have them up here, but yeah, like, I'm just wondering, I'm just curious because I, I do want to get a little bit more structured and, and I'm working towards my structure, but yeah, I just, where, where did you get that from the top? Uh, I'm not sure exactly where it came from. There, there yeah. was a, a framework somewhere that, that basically had like four sections of your to-do list. There was mm -hmm. like urgent and important, not important, but urgent and, and vice versa. And oh, okay. you put them in the four quadrants and then like the not important, not urgent, you just don't ever do. And then the, the not urgent, uh, but important, that you put on your, your big to-do list and the urgent important you focus on. Uh, something along those lines, but I've, I've basically evolved that into, at the end of the day, at five o'clock, 5.30, whatever, I put my four things for tomorrow and say, all right, what, what's not done today and what do I need to get done tomorrow? At the top of the list, and then I just rewrite the rest of the to-do list and then uh, you know, add whatever I didn't get to today. And it, it never ends, but it's nice to put the important ones at the top. Oh, dope. And then uh, how are you starting your day? Are you, are you up at 4.30 like a Rocky montage, <laughs> fucking drinking eggs and, and, you know, running eight miles? Like, you know, like what, what are you doing in the morning time? That's, that's actually exactly my morning routine. <laughs> wow. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> About 4.30, I hammer some raw eggs and, and run a marathon. Uh, no, I'm usually up 6.30-ish. I try to okay. get like two glasses of water do some reading and then that's that's about it off to work sometimes i'll run like a mile but that ain't that impressive yeah um, no i mean well people don't know i mean shit, you are a collegiate athlete i mean you play baseball so i mean that, that shit should be like you know kind of like second yeah, I'm, nature i'm too. retired uh and it's been a <laughs> decade so yeah i don't i don't wear that badge much anymore but yeah. we are training which we're, we're trying to climb mount kilimanjaro in about a month so uh I do need to do some more. Right Are you serious? Now. Yeah. Oh, I didn't we, know if that was a joke or not. I was like, I was, I no, we start August 8th is the, the first day on the mountain. Who is we? Me and Claire and Hamilton. And Claire, uh, Ham, <laughs> what are you guys doing? Well, let's go. <laughs> what, <laughs> who, whose decision was this? Oh, that was, that was mine. I roped them in. We got six Claire. of us total. So, you know, I had to twist a couple arms. No We're going to give it a shot. I'm not all gonna right. get any younger, so let's let's go. Yeah. All right. Well, Godspeed. I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'll see, on, I'll see you on the other side. No, man. I'm just like, <laughs> my goodness. All right. Cool. Do you, you gotta you gotta create some content off of that. You gotta like, no. You know what you should do is like while you're climbing, just eat like like everybody pound, <laughs> pounded seed butter. Just be like, yo, this yeah. is the shit. That's Making cool. a marketing campaign. Yeah. That's a good <laughs> idea, actually. Like Nike. I mean, like a Gatorade shit. Like it was just like. <laughs> Yo, all athletes eat seed butter to for top performance. That's gold. Yeah. You can have that. I'm not even gonna charge it for you. You're welcome. You're welcome. I appreciate it. That's that's some good advice. I'll make Hamilton the face of the campaign. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> no, nah, man. Uh so that's awesome, man. Um, and it's it's been really impressive, like, because you guys are clearly about your business and doing things well. Um, we all have our trials, but it seems like you've really um been intentional and you know appears to be successful in in really having a balance wherever you can um and you know quality of life because a lot of people when you're in startup mode can you can just go into like you're saying yeah going go to your box and be completely miserable but you've been you know really intentional the entire time of uh of having that balance and i mean where does that come from bro i mean because you know you, you could have just went on the, you know, on the extreme to the extreme. About. Yeah, I think I think you can. I think there's times when it calls for that. You know, you have to you have to work weekends every now and then. But 
you'll burn out real quick if you don't if you don't take a step back and you'll you know you got friends and family that, that need to see you and and relationships they need to keep up so exactly. it's yeah it's been pretty intentional like hey we gotta we gotta go do something get away um i think it's healthy and it's also yeah. good for your business because it lets you refresh think about it a little or not think about it for a little <laughs> right. while you know and come back with a fresher set of eyes. So yeah, I, I think it's it's essential. Or otherwise, you'll burn out. Now there are some cases. Otherwise, you look at the Elon Musk. But that's definitely not the that's not the typical case. That's right. Uh, <laughs> that's an outlier for sure. No, for sure, for sure. Um, but yeah, and I think you 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 really said it best, Kev. Like it is the point. Like people think balance is always like you know dividing your time of you know, 25% here, 25% here, mm-hmm. 25%. Like it's, and that is not the way it goes. It's, it's maybe at a certain point in time, you may be all in on this. It's really like balancing, uh, balance to me is more so like a juggling type of thing as opposed to like just even distribution at all times. I mean. Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. It goes back to like the hours per week. You know, you don't need to work eight hours a day, sit in your office nine to five like when work needs to be done do it and if it's not traditional hours so be it but when you have some extra time you know take some time for yourself or your family and it's it's more of like a judgment call than a very strict uh you know you have a boss over your shoulder saying all right sit here and and slap slap the keyboard for nine hours <laughs> it doesn't like okay i could do that but i'm not gonna be very productive you know so exactly uh, yeah, it's just it's just a priority thing exactly um yeah, you know, is is there any type of seasonality to to your business? Not really. I mean, in yeah. the food space, Christmas is a little bit of a bump. So, like pre Christmas, you'll see you'll see a bump if you have something that could be a gift. Mm-hmm. We're we're not really in that space. Um, and then beginning of the year, you'll see everybody trying to get healthy. So yeah, yeah, you know, you'll see a bump, a small bump there. We do a lot of school school kid type products. So you'll see a bump, a little bump in August, but it's not big swings and it's not something that we really, we, we might increase production like 10% around those times, but it's not like a something we, we go out of our way to plan for or, or look forward to. Got you. No, and the reason I ask is because like in our business, uh, spring and summer are just uh, historically huge times for, okay. you know, sales. And so, and typically like towards the end of fall and uh, the holidays, a lot of people aren't trying to move or buy and sell homes. Makes sense. Because, um, so yeah, just, uh, you know, it goes back to that balance. Like right now, it's just like head down and just work, 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 and, you know, try to get as many deals as you can done. And then towards the holidays is kind of where it slows down. And, so is you know, the holidays a good time to buy a house? Is that what you're saying? It can be. It can be. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, I, I really do think, and I'm, that's, I'm really excited because I buy off market deals, um, Mm -hmm. uh, the majority of the time. And so right now when things are so hot, people are like, you know, um, not really interested in doing off market deals with me because they can really push their prices up. If they go the price, um, they can push up when they sell it um and list it with a realtor but the key is they don't really know after they pay all the commissions and shit the walk away is like pretty yeah. much you should deal, deal with me so if you're listening do a deal with other aspects <laughs> no but um but yeah it really those conversations um are a lot easier to have as far as like pricing and whatnot after you know people are trying to sell out outside of those those peak seasons because they're not really seeing like these crazy deals Interesting. Um, okay. Yeah. So, but yeah. And like you're, you're saying, yeah, to, to buy a house, it, I would say around that time, but it's just, if you find something you like and you're able to get it or make an offer, I would say do it because we've seen how shit is so volatile and yeah, you, you, you don't know. Yeah. So yeah. I mean like, yeah, you trying to time the market is, you know, Hey, just, 
be in, be in contact with your lender and just say like, Hey, what do you guys see coming down the pipeline? Okay. Maybe if, if shit's going to rise, maybe I should lock it right now. If not, if you think they're going to come down a little bit, yeah, I can maybe send them a silence for a month or two. So, Got you. Yeah. I don't know. Right. But talk, talk, yeah. Talk to your realtor. I mean, I'm like, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm buying all day every day. So I got yeah, you. I'm yeah, I'm literally yeah. Uh, that's that's what I'm trying to do. Not really going by any script or anything, but um, any kind of questions or, or comments or anything, bro. You really wanted to kind of touch on. I I really do appreciate you doing this for people who don't know. Kevin had already done this fucking episode. Me and him had a grand conversation for like <laughs> uh, a whole hour and a half and then i got the playback and it was just the quality wasn't there so um i do appreciate you you're the you're literally the only uh two-time uh person on here you and rachel both so i appreciate you yeah no, it's no problem at all how's yeah. the i want to ask about how are you enjoying doing podcasts i mean how are you enjoying the you starting to get your legs under you what, what do you think it's cool, bro. Um, I really just like this because regardless of, you know, whether we have uh, the cameras on, like, I mean, granted, I'm asking a, lot, a little bit more about your, your business, but this is kind of how you and I talk. And it's really just cool to catch up with people I know or I admire from before, other business owners and, you know, do this. That's what that's where this whole concept came from. It's just me talking to um, entrepreneurs and really comparing notes and, and, you know, getting gems and, and, you know, advice where I can, like, I'm really going to go check out loom.com again, loom cut the check. I've said your name a couple of times, uh, but uh, yeah, it's, and it's, it's really a good breakup of my day is to do this. It's completely different than, you know, what I'm doing in my day-to-day business and is you know it's, it's just you know it's interesting i would i would love to you know start you know monetizing from this but of we'll course. see yeah 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 but i mean you know we'll, we'll see where it goes but yeah I, I really just enjoy having these conversations with you know with people and so it's been cool um that's another thing i'm probably going to need to move the editing outside of myself yeah and, yeah and yeah, you can you can outsource that. No, yeah. I think it's cool to to stay in touch with people. I think too many people are bad at that, and like, and using this as a vehicle to be like, all right, let's let's get in touch, let's chat. How's everything going? Is important. Like, yeah. too many people don't don't do that anymore with people that used to be tight with. So I think it's it's a cool cool idea. No, for sure, man. I yeah, I appreciate it. And um, so yeah, I mean, the the podcast has been cool. Um, yeah, man, we're we're doing them weekly, and we'll see. I. I think I'm going to do one of those things like a hard stop and just call it season one and take a break. All right. <laughs> when, when, is, when that's going to happen, I have no idea. But yeah. Um, but yeah, man, it's uh, it's just really cool, man, to, to, to listen in uh, where your business is headed. I mean, OK, so we've got we've got the uh, the fundraising going on. We have these um, partnerships and. Uh, new development of products. I mean, is that pretty much the focus for the next, I guess, 12 months, uh, you know, the rolling 12 months or what would you say? Yeah, basically. So we're, we're, we're developing some products with Ocean Spray. That's kind of our, our main focus outside of fundraising and, and making sure that line is, you know, unique and interesting and, and appealing to both investors, but also consumers, which is, you know, our main target. So, we're developing that. We're trying to roll that out Q4 probably. Um, and then we have some, some phase two type plans for next year. Um, but yeah, fundraising, hiring and product development, obviously servicing customers we already have. Yeah, man. I, I definitely appreciate uh, cause I know it is super busy after the fact that we had to re uh, schedule, I mean, <laughs> re re-record it's kind of been, really getting on your on your schedule and finding time so I, I i know your time is is valuable so i definitely appreciate it brother no this has been awesome i appreciate you having me on anytime yeah yeah so i mean I, i've never done this before but hey it's a first time for everything because i mean fuck <laughs> it, it is my show and i can do whatever the fuck i want All right, so, we'll um, see. yeah so i guess you know there's a couple of questions that i didn't get out but i know we're, we're near an hour mark so i still want to ask you and it's just going to be rapids um, sure 
So, and then they're going to be all over the place. They're not going to be connected, just kind of prefacing okay. that. But I mean, you say you read a lot of books. Do you have any books you're, you recommend or what are you reading right now? Uh, right now I'm reading a book about Siberia. It's uh, okay. Pass. Um, what for a while. Yeah. I would, I would, uh, <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> I probably, it's probably not up your alley. Um, <laughs> but I'm a, the next book I'm reading is um, by the guy who started Patagonia. Let my people oh. go surfing or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I got that next. And I think that's about, you know, company culture and work-life balance type stuff. So I think that would be interesting. Oh, no, I will definitely put that on the list. And then Kev, would you consider yourself an introvert or an extrovert? An introvert for sure. What? <laughs> yeah, man. I don't know. You put me in like a networking event or something. I'm hanging out in the corner, sipping my beer. Wrong. You're out shaking hands and raising money. That's what you're doing right now. That's because I have to. Yeah, but it's not. That doesn't mean it's 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 that you know normal or comfortable. I think yeah. you do things you got to do. You know certain things, but yeah, I think traditionally more of an introvert. I've never seen the introverted side of you, but hey, if you say, <laughs> if, you, if you say that's what it is, then that's what it is. In this day and age. Do you think that it's important for people to get a college degree, a four-year degree? Um, a four-year degree, no, not mm-hmm. necessarily. I think some kind of degree, a trade school or something. Something, uh, okay. I think is probably important, but Why so? it depends on who you are and what you want to do. Okay. Um, I think at the end of the day, even our degrees from Tulane, like nobody's looking at our GPA. Nobody's... Nobody's asking what courses we took, right? They're, right? They want to know what our experience is. So the problem is getting that first experience and really getting out there without a degree is probably the toughest. Right. Um, but once you do, that's what people are going to ask you about. That's right. what gets you your next opportunity. So I, I think it's it probably gets you in the door a lot of places that you couldn't get in without it right now. But that's changing. Um, I think we'll see where we're at in 10 years. Good point. Good point. And, um, um, you know, just to kind of uh, spoiler alert for all you kids in there that are in school and stressing over your GPA, I have never been asked my GPA on an interview, and I have never offered my GPA to anybody um, uh, on my on my resume or anything. And yeah, but you know, take with take it, uh, of that you know, what you may. But hey, that's right, you guys. Know. But um, okay. Uh, Dude, what is your biggest pet peeve at the moment? Just generally or? In general. I mean. Oh, man. (laughs) I got a lot of them. Uh, Are you talking business-wise? But when your socks get wet is the thing that drives me the craziest. Uh, Yeah, that's, yeah. That is, yeah, that's random. Yeah. That shit drives me crazy. uh, Hopefully my wife doesn't make it all the way to this episode, but I really, (laughs) really, really, really fucking hate when I order something and then she eats off my plate, it's like, yo, oh, if you want to order that shit, if you liked it, order it yourself. But Dude, you just got to prepare for that. That's the thing. Right. Get yeah. an extra side of something. That's that's not going to change. Ex- yeah, I didn't order extra shit. You like it, you order it. But hey, <laughs> I'm getting me all fired up right now about it. If you weren't doing this and with Beyond the Equator, what would you be doing? What do you think you would be doing? That's a good question. I don't know. I think... Um, Web3 is interesting. I, I mean, I don't think I would have been in that obviously 10 years ago when, when there wasn't much there, but I think if I had to stop today and do something else, I think that would be interesting. Um, I do like the food space. I think it's, mm-hmm. it's never going away and people are trending towards healthier, you know, more, you know, plant-friendly, uh, environmentally friendly stuff. And I don't know what else. Yeah, pro- probably something like that. I do like some human rights stuff, nonprofit stuff, but I also like making money. So I don't know if I don't know if that if those ever cross paths much. If they um, do, you probably end up in jail. So. Exactly, they shouldn't <laughs> cross paths. So right. I think I would focus on making money first, and then maybe touch on that later on. Philanthropy later on. All right, no, right on. Um, and uh, I guess the last thing I would uh, just wrap it around is uh, wrap it around. Get out of here. Um, is uh, naming naming segments as I go. Do you have any other investments or anything you're kind of involved with at this point? Because I know this takes up 
you know, so much of your time, but are, yeah, are you, are um, you, uh, do you invest in real estate? Do you invest in stocks or? Anything? Yeah. I mean, I, I have a, an investing account or a basic E-Trade at stocks and stuff, I have a little bit of REIT type stuff in real mm-hmm. estate. I don't own any real estate. Um, yeah. Uh, that's the basic stuff. Some crypto holdings. Um, mm-hmm. I think beyond that, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Just mm-hmm. try to get a relatively decent balance between, you know, retirement fund stocks, For sure. a little bit of separate stuff like REITs or art and then crypto. No, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Crypto is everything's taking the beating right now, but oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's why, I mean, even more so, uh, yeah, I've really pivoted this year and I'm, focusing more on like buying and buying uh, properties to hold or, you know, just building cash reserves. Every, I mean, I'm not saying like I'm taking, liquidating my holdings in crypto and um, right. all in our stocks. I bought a little bit of Amazon when it split, but other, yeah. but more so um, I'm not really putting a lot of money into the markets right now or in crypto just because it's so volatile. Because I saw a whole bunch of people run like Bitcoin's down to 30. I'm buying everything. I'm putting all this money in. It's like Bitcoin is at 19K or it was exactly. at 19K. I mean, going to 20 is like, yeah, you still lost, you know, a little bit, buddy. So, I think you interesting. Interesting. You average your your investments over, you know, if you just keep weekly or monthly investing in stuff, you average out the cost. And if you think it's a good solid investment over the long term. Don't look too much at the cost right now. It's kind of how I look at it. Like in exactly. 10 years, if I bought a 19 or 24, will it matter? It's either going to be at zero or 200,000, right? So exactly, exactly. And, and that's why my, in my personal opinion, I put, I had money in those different lanes and it's just like, all right, I'm not putting any more money right now, but right. I'm leaving it in there and, you know, we'll see where it goes. So there you go. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, man, I always like to kind of end this with, uh, well, first, again, if people are interested and really want to check out what you got going on with Beyond Equip, because like you said, you're coming out with some different products. And if yep. you guys haven't tried the, it's the five seed butter, right? That's right. Five seed butter. Check that shit out. It's a great. <laughs> no, it's phenomenal. I mean, my kids tore it up. It. Um, yeah, if, if you guys like are into peanut butter, but looking for a healthier alternative option, check that out. It's, you know, definitely um, uh, a competitor or replacement to can be for peanut butter. And then I haven't even, well, I've checked out some of the things you had in R&D, but I need to check out some of the things you got going on. So if anybody is interested in getting that, they can go to the what Yo, was beyond, website again? Beyondtheequator.com. Uh, so, you know, we, so. We're on all the socials, everything. So, yeah. And if people are interested in reaching you directly, um, you're a busy man. I mean, whether it be if they're interested in you know, somebody maybe listening to want to you know, hear about uh, fun, the fundraising investing with Beyond the Equator or have yeah. questions about you or the business, how can people reach out to you? Yeah, email is probably easy. It's just Kevin at beyondtheequator.com. Okay. 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 Cool. And um, I'll... I'm going to share your IG handle here. I don't know if you're, you're, you're private or not, but you have, Kevin has probably some of the wittiest posts that I see. Out there. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, and it's, I, it's not private. There's nothing. Not okay. Anything. Okay. okay cool. Anything. Cool. Cool. Are you still, are you still paying bro? You've been kind of getting a little, little fancy with the paintings. Like, yeah. Like, we paint a little bit. We brew some beers. It's, it's a pretty laid back Instagram. There's nothing too serious. There. Shout out to Kevin's bodacious brews. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Bye. Well, my favorite brewery in in, in Houston, uh, I'm sorry, in New Orleans. If you guys go, try to go there and and find it, um, you'll yeah. You'll don't recommend yeah. swinging by because it does not exist. Uh, if you do swing by, please don't leave us a Yelp review. Right, and cursing and cursing <laughs> everyone out. So yeah, please yeah. don't do that. It's um, not real. Cool, but yeah, bro, I definitely appreciate your time, man. And I guess we'll just end it with, I mean, Kev, when it's all said and done, man. Um, you know, well, I think let's, let's not even do when it's all said and done. It's like for people who are watching this and kind of getting a feel for your your personality and everything. Like, what do you really want uh, Kevin and to and and Beyond the Equator to be, you know, known for? And what do you want to kind of represent? 
Yeah, I mean, as far as beyond the equator goes, like just like a solid business that's pushing forward, you know, healthy products, good for people, good for the planet, you know, taking some simple ideas and really executing them properly. And then me, I don't, I don't know, man, just uh, happy go lucky. I want, I want people to like, man, I enjoy interacting with that dude. I have a good time. You know, he just, you know, he's upbeat. He's happy to happy to do things. The guy's good times, man. The guys get, uh, you know, that's, it. that's what it's all yeah, about. Very solid dude. No, I kept, I definitely appreciate it, man. Um, Cause I know your time is very valuable. So I appreciate your time. So yeah. Um, with that being said, this has been another episode of masterminds with James Allen and check us out every Thursday for new episodes and that's it guys. Peace.